Okay, in this video I want to take a quick look at the Morserino 32. It's a Morse code learning device. It was the brainchild of a ham radio operator called Billy Crammel. That's Oscar Echo 1 Whiskey Kilo Lima. It was developed in conjunction with the Graz Morse Code School where I help out and uh, many of the features that we thought would be uh, helpful when learning uh, to uh, copy Morse code and in particular learning to copy Morse code in your head were included as standard by Vili so we're very uh, grateful to that but in particular today I want to focus on the um, echo trainer mode which we think is particularly useful so let's turn this device on as you can see it has a nice display which comes with it and uh, we have various modes we're currently in echo trainer mode so I'm just going to quickly go through the modes you could have the Koch trainer mode using the Koch method we have a transceiver a LoRa uh, transceiver that's long range Wi-Fi uh, in a 400 megahertz band so you don't actually need a ham radio license to be able to have a basic QSO with another ham operator and we think that's useful for people who don't yet possess the ham radio license and we have a CW decoder. You can uh, take audio from another device, feed it into the Moserino 32 and it will decode the Morse for you. Uh, we can put it to sleep. And we have a basic CW keyer there uh, with a PTT output. So you can key another device, which is also optocoupled. So it's completely isolated from uh, your rig's uh, keying circuitry. We also have a CW generator if you just want to listen to some Morse code. You can upload your own files uh, and listen to those if you want to listen to a book. And here we are in the echo trainer mode. So let's double click here and just have a look at some of the settings. We can have the tone there. Uh, I usually go quite low at 523. Uh, this speaker actually comes from the automobile industry and it's actually designed to uh, send a much higher uh, frequency. Although it does work here, so I like to set the tone a bit lower and I find I just get a nicer tone out of it. Uh, we're on an external paddle. Uh, this device will also accept capacitive paddles here in the two um, slots there. They work very well actually uh, for capacitive paddles. I was quite impressed. I'm not usually a fan of capacitive paddles but uh, these worked well. And then we have the DITDAR orientation, uh, Curtis mode B which we always use, then some auto character space that's off, tone shift you can have uh, the um, acknowledgement tone shifted up so you know there's a difference between the tone you use and the tone that the Morserino uses. The interword space, this is very important when you're learning to copy in your head because uh, it enables um, the words to be spaced out slightly more and you can choose how big you want the space. It gives you more time to think just in between the words and uh, currently there's only one other program available. It's an internet based program uh, called Morse Fusion that allows an interword space but only up to four times the normal. Uh, this has a much bigger range and uh, it's uh, Apart from Morse Fusion, it's the only um, piece of equipment on the market uh, which actually allows that. Uh, we think it's uh, very useful. Into character space, all programs have an into character space. Uh, random groups, um, this is if you're going to use Echo Trainer with just random groups of letters. You can choose whether you want numbers, the alphabet, pro signs, punctuation. And the length of the group, how many characters you want in each uh, in each set. Here it's set to three, but you could have uh, many more. And now we're on calls, because uh, I'm going to do call signs today to demonstrate it. And we have nine, uh, four, four characters in our call sign, but that's, uh, that's a lot to begin with. Uh, some people would find that a lot. Most people start with three. That's uh, uh, a letter, a number, and a letter. So let's see what this is like. We come out of that, and we'll click again nope we'll long click and we're now in echo trainer mode so we select echo trainer mode and to begin what will happen is I'll push the paddle it will start sending uh, the call signs I have to try and uh, remember what I heard and then input it correctly with my key 
If I'm right, I get a tone and it will say correct. If I'm wrong, I'll get another tone and it will say error and it will repeat the call sign. It will repeat it about four times. If I don't get it right at all in those four times, then it will tell me what the call sign was and move on to a new one. So let's have a look, see what happens. Nope, not random. Ah, that's not what we want at all. So let's long press, echo trainer mode. We go to call signs, there we are. And so you have a choice here, we might as well look at this. You could have English words, um, Morse code abbreviations, uh, random letters. You could even upload a file and play that. You could have mixed. We're gonna go for call signs, so let's start now. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. As you can see, three signs, uh, three letters or three symbols in your call sign and uh, it's not too hard. You can usually manage that. Let's see what happens when we go up to four. So let's double click again to do the settings. And now we're going to change the length of the call. I'm going to go for four, four characters. And long press to come out of that. And then short press to start. Let's see what happens. Probably a disaster. <laughs> Okay, I'll stop it there. As you can see, sometimes it takes me quite a few goes, and uh, but I can read off all the characters that I got right on the screen, and then I just have to adjust the last one. And you can see it took me a while to get that K on the last uh, call sign there. But uh, the great thing about this is it really activates the memory. It, uh, it trains you to remember in a way that just listening to Morse code could never do. Yeah, you're forced to kind of remember more and more. So we think in particular, this is a really good, uh, a really good feature of this device. There are many others. Um, it can be used as an input device for uh, internet Morse code if you want to have a QSO over the internet and um, up where, um, software updates will become available uh, for this uh, device um, probably at the end of this month or the beginning of next month so um, it's always going to be uh, updatable uh, via firmware updates. Uh, so if you are interested in learning Morse code 
Uh, I really think this device could help you a great deal. You should check it out.